Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It's August 10th. This will be our chart lesson for today. This is going to wrap our week up. Remember, no chart lessons on Fridays these days. Uh, I'm considering, some of you probably may not want to hear this, but I'm considering uh, not even doing um, the mid-morning chart on Fridays anymore because I'm thinking about I'm not going to trade on Fridays and start taking Fridays off. I need a break more than anything, just doing this day after day for years and years. And, you know, really all I need to trade for my own personal needs is two or three days a week. And so, um, you know, trading Monday through Thursday is more than enough for me. And I'm thinking about starting to take Fridays off. I haven't made up my mind yet, but just throwing that out there in case I do decide I won't catch some of you completely by guard or, or off guard. And, um, yeah, I may start just taking Fridays off completely. Um, again, just because, simply because I, you know, I'm, I need it. Um, when you sit here and look at this thing day after day after day, it's starting to affect my eyes. Uh, I've had a few conversations with another trader. I'm, I'm starting to get some repetitive motions in my uh, hand from using the mouse over and over for day after day for years. And so it's just not healthy for you to sit here like this all day long every day uh, when you figure up how many hours I've done this over the years it is a lot a lot of hours and uh, so I still love trading uh, I don't see myself retiring anytime soon to be honest even though I've kicked that around a little bit too I, I just I'm, more, I'm too much of a workaholic and I, I like trading I, I just I like it uh, however I, I don't like it so much that I like sitting here five days a week uh, over and over and over I'm getting to the point where I think I only want to trade three or four days a week and take the rest off so that's where I'm headed but anyway uh, let's get to the chart lesson that's a little bit of a tangent I didn't really mean to get off on that but I just thought I'd throw it out there um, great trend just I'm just this is the question I've got I wonder how many of you got frustrated with the ES and had been looking at other markets and what and weren't here today to have the easiest trading day you'd probably have in a long long time and you only had to catch one or two of these and you just you know if you use and you always want to use runners on a day like this and just about every trade that set up off a key entry point would have had a runner uh, look at this runner here look at this runner this one this one this one this one this one this one, this one, this one. Every, actually, this one wouldn't have been that good a runner because it did come back here. But just every one of those other ones, you would have had a super runner that would have got you multiple points. And you only needed to catch one or two of them and you would have a great day. But if you sat here and traded all day, you know, you get three or four or five trades here and all of them got runners. I mean, this is the kind of day you make up for all those slow days. And if you're steadily running around looking at different markets, trying to find something else, because this one seems like it's too slow for you, and uh, that's where you mess up. And I told another trader today, if you're, you know, if you feel like a market's too slow, I mean, as long as you can find a couple of trades, the idea is making money. And so if you've got to sit here all day to find two trades, as long as you make money, you're good. You're golden. But if your goal is to come in here and the thrill of trading and to trade and have lots of trades setting up and to constantly be in and out, then you're trading for the wrong reason and you're probably going to lose money. Uh, but if you can come in here and you can be patient and you can just sit here and wait on the, the ideal setup and uh, when it comes, take it without any fear, you're going you're, you're gonna to be heads and tails above most traders. Because most new traders are in here for the thrill. I was the same way. I mean, I'd have a winner and I'd be so high, and then I'd have a loser and I'd be on the bottom rung. And, and there's no in between. You're either on a cloud, you're either on cloud nine, or you're ten feet down. And that's the way trading is until you get past realizing that it's not about the motions and the thrill. And if that's what you're here for, you'd be better off to go to the casino probably because you probably got a better odds than you would here uh, when you're just picking and choosing. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, But yeah, the, today made up for the last two weeks 
And if it didn't, it should have. And if you weren't here because you were off looking at another market, uh, hopefully it's a good learning lesson for you to, you know, just be patient and just, just, just wait because it's coming. So there's another tangent I didn't mean to get off on, but uh, let's get to the chart lesson. I'm doing it a little bit earlier today. I, I got a something I need to be at this afternoon, so I'm going to finish this up and get out of here. But, man, this was a perfect day. Um, downhill the whole way. Actually, well, I shouldn't say the whole way. We finally broke the channel here, and there's really... I consider that one leg, and then there's your second leg. Two legs down, and the second leg even went a little further before we corrected here a little more and then sold off again. But generally on a day like this, you're going to end up trading down most of the day. And you may have some corrections in there, but you'll just start up a new trend. Like here, we had a break, and then it just started a new trend right down through here. And notice what happens even after that break. And this is two measured legs up here. You had a two-legged correction. And the trend started back again, and that's really, really common. You can see, and we got a little bit more than a second leg up, but there, there's your one leg, and then there's a correction, and then another leg. And so there's a two-legged correction, and then the trend starts back up again, and we end up trading down, and we're still trading down. We're not quite, um, looks like we're about a, few seconds away from the market closing here still trading and still headed down so um, keep that in mind that you know when you get a downtrend like this it's probably not going to reverse in most cases and you just wait on it come back to the key entry point the trend lines and uh, just keep trading and you'll probably keep making money so anyway first trade I saw let me come over here and back up a little bit we'll move on through the trades here but what this is, is a spike in channel. We spiked down and we went into this channel. This, you know, when you start this trend right here, it's just too steep. And, you know, a good healthy trend is about a 45 degree angle like this. And so that's what happens. It spikes down and then it levels out. And sometimes you'll get a break and a little correction, then it'll start a new trend at a, at a more healthy level. But a lot of times it'll do a spike in channel like this. It spikes down, but it's too steep, so it'll flatten out and go into a channel. And that's what we had today. And all I did was simply draw that first trend line off those first few swings. And when I drug it to the bottom, it fits perfect. Um, so you had what you needed there. The only thing when we came back up here off these lows, you didn't quite get back to the trend line. But that's telling you something. So you really had to wait on a better setup. And notice I waited on the failed second entry long here, the reversal type pattern. Uh, notice you're working up, it tried to go higher once, goes down, tries to go higher twice, it fails, and look how bearish that bar is. There's your chance to go short, and off it goes. And where does it bounce? Right off the low. So where is it probably headed now? Back to the high. It heads back up there. It touches it to the tick and turns down again. Uh, that's the first break of that little channel. So um, I waited on another attempt to go higher and see if he'd try to make a new high, and it turns down right off the EMA. That's not a very good signal bar, but uh, with this coming right off of that trend line and the fact that it couldn't even get back up there, I still like that. That's, that's more of a neutral bar than it is a bullish or bearish bar, but it's still a second entry short, and, um, you know, this is a downtrend, and we just came off the high. Uh, if you, this one, you you know, I could almost argue for this one to be green, um, but I'm going, I'm going to leave it red. I went back and forth whether that one should be green or not, but I think most people would probably understand that on a, when you've been trading down like that, you're probably going to at least test this low at a very minimum. And notice we did that. And notice how we're bouncing right off that trend channel line right there and then we head right back to the other side once again and where does it turn down right off that trend line and look how bearish it actually went higher and then turned and went out the other side uh, I probably would not have a stop waiting there on that one I would want this bar to finish and when it finished that negative under the EMA just put a stop right there and what you might do is let it break lower and put a limit order back one tick below this bar um, 
but you're taking a chance there that you might miss one and this thing just takes off and notice this is a little spike in channel and look how it just keeps going and going so if you catch a runner there man you're in great position and I by this time I didn't even draw the, the trend lines you can see that there so that's why um, that's the only thing about this one is you got the trend line working here but by this time every time we've touched this trend line and this is a strong trend you just gotta if you don't enter there you're not gonna get an entry and um, there's a little correction right here with another chance to enter but it's right into those lows and I'm not gonna risk that one honestly you could probably make that one green simply because uh, the channel is very clear look how many times we've touched the bottom and bounced look how many times we've touched the top I mean this is a very clear channel there's no doubt it's there we actually overshot it slightly here so if we keep going through at some point you might have to consider it's two tiered and you just move it an equal distance over which is all that line is an equal distance and look where it but so you would have known exactly where to look for this to probably bounce is when it hit this line by being an equal distance away so you you know where to look for this to reverse but um, again I don't like that one because it's right into that support and it's just dangerous going short into that uh, even because what's what you expect might happen here is it could bounce come back up hit the trend line and then go down or you might get a little breakout pull back that pulls back to the trend line enough to stop you out anyway even though you know where it's probably headed and so okay I'm sorry I had a s interruption there I had to answer that it was an important call but yeah I think we were too close to the support here um, so if you didn't catch this one up here you don't catch this big move here because I don't see anywhere else there it's safe to enter that I, I would say this notice when it went through here it pulls back and tests that line and turns back down here if you had a really good setup here you might consider going short here this is not I don't like this one especially when you had another inside bar that couldn't break lower but you got to figure we're headed at equal distance but it could just be an overshoot and it breaks a tick or two lower and reverses so I just don't think you can enter there and of course where does it reverse a perfect equal distance to the tick climb straight back up to the to the mid to the uh, midline and then it just starts going sideways uh, somebody will probably ask me about this uh, failed second entry long here because you got a new swing high here pull back first entry pull back second entry so it, it's a form of a failed second entry and it, it is right off that EMA but you're going sideways here you got a, a doji or two in here you got stems on both sides and you just came off the very low so there's a good chance we're probably headed to the upper side and so you got to be really really careful uh, because you you may get trapped and this one would have worked to the to the tick I think it got exactly four ticks and um, because if, if it had been one less you got trapped in there but I think it, it would have still worked but I don't recommend taking that trade for the reason I just described and sure enough it does bounce and go higher even though you would have probably gotten out of that one um, and of course notice this channel working up here prices are fitting real neatly you do get a break here uh, but we weren't quite to the trend line so you figure it's going to at least come back to there but it pushes on up and so now you got to break a new high um, but because we're getting a break here I want to make sure this is played out and you may get another push up so this one's a little risky again I think it was exactly enough to scalp out there but it's risky because sometimes you get two legs and a lot of times you may push up and just make one tick higher and that's what it looked like it was gonna do there but you would have gotten burned on this one this one would have still you would have still survived uh, going short on but you need to wait on a lower high in this situation to make sure that this trend channel is played out that this corrections played out and that's where most people mess up they start trying to pick the top of this correction knowing that it's probably going lower because on a trend trend line that's this 
proven and this strong, we're going to retest that low. You can count on it. And we may even get another trend to the downside. So, but you got to let this play out and make sure you're, you know, you're done. And so that's the first lowest high right there. And um, it actually went higher, turned and goes out the other side. I like that one. Uh, it's not real far away from the EMA, but you got a double top. You've had a break. You've got two legs up. You got a double top. You got a bearish bar. You got it's going out both sides. You got enough there to say, hey, I'm gonna go short on that one. You get a lower high right here, but it's right. You know, you're going short. You know, you got a doji, a bar, and then another bar that doesn't break lower. So that's congestion right there, and you got to be real careful, even in a downtrend, going short it right at the low of congestion, because it may. What's probably going to happen is it's going to fail out both sides before it goes lower. And look what happens. It fails out the low side. I don't have my lines on there, so some of you may. I can see most of this stuff these days without even putting the lines on there, but I recommend you always put them on there because uh, not everybody can see that. But you can see that congestion now. We're going sideways, and you fail out the bottom, you fail out the top, and the one out the top is the one you want to – get on with because it's all downhill we're looking for a retest look at it go another runner there and then of course it comes back we actually have a new low in here so uh you got to be real careful this one was tempting to go short and it would have worked but again uh now that you've had a break and you've got two legs down and you got a new low you need a good setup and this trend line looks it looks uh like it's valid but you want to be 100% certain that it's valid. And um, notice that we make another little double top there and a big bearish bar. So I like going short there. And off it goes. And I would look for, at this point, I would measure this leg, these two legs as one leg, and that's a correction, and look for at least a measured leg. And you can see we went a little bit further than that, but that got you real close. Um, Coming down, there's a uh, another failed second entry long right here because that's a double top. Uh, there's actually a high there, first entry, second entry. So this is a failed second entry long, but you're going short into the low of the day right there after we've had a break and two legs down. So in this first leg, so you got to be real careful. You just can't go short there. Um, and then comes back down I lost my place there where was that set up well anyway um, you're looking for this measured move and you enter there and you get a failed second a fail uh, because that's a double top you count that as a new high than a first entry long second entry long but again you're going short it's not a very good signal bar but on a trap you don't really care but being that close to the lows and you're not really back to the EMA or the uh, trend line, the key entry point. So you got to be careful there. And it does push on lower, but you know, you don't want to be riding that out hoping and then it bounce on you. And of course it does bounce. And then you get another lower high here. It didn't tick higher, but notice how it's just creeping down that trend line. Um, I like going short again right there. You got plenty of room to get out. And this would have caught, it's off that key entry point. And this would have caught you another runner. And again, this is the same thing as these others. This, you know, you're starting to go sideways. It's too close to the low. They're starting to be. You can starting to see the buying coming in. It's, it, they haven't reversed it yet, but they're starting to. It's starting to look like a value, and people are starting to try to pick bottoms. And then it finally does bounce here, and you get a reversal right here. Um, but it's right into the EMA. You want to see it on the other side. It does switch to the other side here, but now it's right back into that trend line. Um, you got to be real careful. Uh, you don't necessarily want to go short here um, because of this channel working up. Uh, you had not had a break of it yet, and if you had it gone short there, you get trapped, and you can see that. And that's why you really want to draw all these shorter term trend lines and things. And originally I had this a little bit tighter like this right here. And that may be right. Uh, 
but even so that's your first close outside so you want to see it make a new high and that's not necessarily convincing close and the fact that it you see that little gap there uh, that's that gap I'm always talking about where there's no overlap between those two bars that generally tells you there's some kind of support resistance right through there because I don't don't ask me why it gaps over it it just does and I can show you that over and over on charts so um, that's probably where the trend line is you can see the this bouncing off of it here as well and then we get an overshoot and we try to go higher and it turns down uh, Notice that high, first entry, second entry, that's a double test of that. Went higher first, turned out the other side. It looked just like uh, right in here on this reversal. It's almost a, was it that one or? Yeah, it looks similar to that one. And um, it's, it's kind of a repeat pattern. Just go short right there. Uh, you got plenty of room before here, and it may be going to retest the over the overall low it doesn't it ends up make, being a two-legged correction here so you get another leg up but notice what happens you're moving up you get a close outside move to a new high look how far away you are from the EMA it went higher then turns down same kind of thing here and wherever else it was over here um, right here and then you get a lower high here um, I went back and forth about this one um, cause it's right back into the EMA, but look how easy that went back through the EMA and then it pulls back and it makes a lower high. So I would at least look for a measured leg like that. And you can see that puts prices way down here, back down to this low, but this thing just keeps going. So that would have been another runner for you. And if you would have stayed in this, just draw your trend line. And stay with it till you get a close outside and then a break higher and that would have been probably right there so you could have ridden that down to right here I mean this would have been another one you would have considered entering with that trend line right down through there and that, that gets you into the two o'clock hour but there's more than enough trades there you only need a few of those a couple of those really and uh, you may only need one if you catch a good runner depending on what your target for the day is so um, these are the kind of days you wait on and what happens I, I guarantee there were a lot of you probably trying to pick bottoms because you you're you you've gotten lulled to sleep the last couple of weeks because it's always a range day and as soon as it starts bouncing you're thinking reversal and you probably start trying to buy and it just keeps going lower than you try it again and so you got to be able to recognize these kind of days and what's going on and uh, it was pretty obvious on this spike and channel here that we were at least had a downtrend day and so we were going to retest this low and then once you got another trend going down uh, each time we broke the next trend it just started another one down and that's fairly typical on a strong trend day um, that'll happen a lot sometimes you get inside a bigger channel and it lasts all day long and you might also I never even took it up here copy that and drag it all the way to the top if you use the closes that pretty much accounts almost for that trend line right there it doesn't quite fit but that's the same you notice that's the same shorter term trend line that I used right there it looks like it's probably off that high so a lot of times these lines will just you know just move them over it'll be the same trend line not always just like this was a different angle here it got real steep again here actually so um, in the end, if you played around with this and looked at it, you may, you may find that maybe this is the trend line and maybe there's another midline in there somewhere. Yeah, it, it, it fits, but it doesn't help you that much. I think the way I had it, it, you could read it a lot better because look how you're bouncing here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you're turning down here with no trend line. You're bouncing here with nothing. I mean, it looks like maybe we're actually undulating back and forth across that midline, but that doesn't really help you that much. You need you need to know where those key entry points are, and if you put it right there, there's no doubt where you should have entered every time. And look how it took off every time uh, when it hit those points.
I mean, it was very clear where you needed to be entering. On a strong trend day, generally it's going to be that trend line. That's going to be your best trades. And you'll get some off the EMA, but generally you're going to get, get back to that trend line or want it to get back to that trend line. And that's going to be the ones you really like. And notice that's where the big ones all, and then notice these came off that same trend line. So anyway, a little bit longer trend uh, chart lesson today. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, we're going to wrap it up for the week. Uh, I'll be back to do it Monday, but I'm done for this week. Uh, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>